Watch this video to learn about invasive plants of New England. Please subscribe. Hi, John. Hi, Cara. How are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you doing, John? I'm great. I'm excited about this. So, uh, where are you taking me today? We are off to the infamous Carlisle Invasive Plant Gallery that I planted with a friend of mine, Kevin Brown, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago. I had been doing some workshops on invasive plant identification and found that people really do need to see the plants in the flesh and blood. It's really difficult to correctly identify them versus native plants if you're not looking at the plant themselves. Could you tell me what exactly is an invasive plant? It's a plant species that did not evolve in this area as part of our ecosystem. And then it was imported here for one reason or another, and then found things much to its liking. And instead of fitting into the ecosystem, like many of our exotic plants, it really just has an incredible advantage against our native plants and overwhelms an area. Okay. And that's largely because it doesn't have any natural enemies. There are insects that are not eating it, animals are not eating it, the, the, the fungal diseases are not you know, present for that plant. And so it just goes nuts. Oh, okay. So now I guess, oh, we're on route 225. 225. Oh my goodness, and yep. we're in? Carlisle, about to pass Kimball's in westbound. Okay, look at the solar panels there. Next to the Green Cemetery, we have this athletic field complex called Bantha Davis. Oh, I see it. I see is it. A sign for that? Yeah. Bantha Davis. And we come right up here at 304 Bedford Road. It's got a street address now. Yeah. Now we're coming up to what I call Carlisle's only vacant lot. Oh, wow. Next to the newly expanded Green Cemetery. And we're going to pull right up to the Invasive Plant Gallery. Oh my excellent goodness. Parking. Excellent parking. Excellent parking. You right can here. really just park right there. So what do we have here? Okay, so we have 10 very common invasive plants for Carlisle. Uh, let's start with the first one. This is uh, Glossy Buckthorn. Oh yeah, nice labels. Thank you. And here's what the glossy buckthorn looks like in spring and summer. The fruits start as green and then they become red and then blackish purple. Here's a young glossy buckthorn. Notice how the veins go straight out to the sides. You can see what the leaf looks like of the glossy buckthorn. It's an invasive ornamental shrub. The prolific fruits are spread widely by birds. This shrub or small tree has tiny flowers, and thick oval leaves with smooth edges. With many parallel veins, unlike the less common, common buckthorn. Its fruits are scattered along the branch rather than clustered. You can wet the soil and yank the younger saplings or apply an herbicide to the bark of older trees in spring. Where did you get the printed material for this, the signs? A friend of mine uh, is a well-known naturalist in Concord. His name is Peter Alden. Okay. And he, uh, he put them together for me. Oh, very nice. Norway maple. <laughs> what kind of leaves does a Norway maple have? They're like uh, our native maples. Uh, they look a lot like a sugar maple. You need to have a pretty good eye to identify the difference. Identify, identify the difference. But uh, a real telltale when they're in leaf, the Norway maples exude a white sap when you break them open. Mm, mm, mm. And so that's really easy to get confirmation when they're... When you mean they're those flowers? The, when the flowers? No, mm -hmm. the leaves themselves, when you break the leaf off at the petiole oh, okay. and stem, okay. they'll, they'll bleed a white sap. And it's very, uh, very telling. Now you know that when you see those maples lining the streets of, of New England, that in fact it's most likely a Norway maple. And the key to this tree is that when you pick the leaf off at the petiole, it actually has a white sap. The suggested eradication method is the same as for most plants. You yank the saplings when they're small, or you can cut down the tree and apply herbicide to the cut. Multiflora rose. Oh, I hate the multiflora rose. <laughs> Oh, MF and Rose. MF and Rose. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, God, that's awful. This is a nasty, thorny, long branched invasive alien shrub from China and Eastern Asia. It has been planted along highways throughout the East. It was used for controlling erosion along newly built highways and as a living fence that protected bunnies and fed many birds. It has been crucial in allowing mockingbirds to winter in the north. The multitudinous clusters of white flowers are followed by forked clusters of small red fruits. The bases of the leaves, which have seven leaflets, are hairy, unlike the native roses. The branches are often curved with thick thorns. It is illegal to import or sell in Massachusetts and most states. Pulling the roots is nasty business. It's best to herbicide the stems in late winter before the leaf out and later cut back any growth. So here's the burning bush. Yeah, we hate the burning bush. Also called winged euonymus. Very hard to confuse this plant with anything else. Yeah, I actually have that in my house. Yes, another horror story of a spreading plant. This invasive ornamental shrub that is invading our forest and edges has been ubiquitous in the past in landscaping. Native to China and East Asia, the shrub has tiny white flowers. The thin oval opposite leaves are green and unremarkable until October when they turn brilliant red. Most show the brownish wings along their stems. Its tiny orange fruits ripen in fall and are consumed by birds and spread widely. Now banned in Massachusetts for import and sale, Younger saplings should be yanked out of wet soil or use a weed wrench. Herbicide should be applied to the bark of older plants in spring. Barberry, oh my goodness. This is a thorny invasive ornamental shrub. The thorns are sharp. The flowers are bell-shaped and yellow. The fruits are orange-red color. You can yank the smaller plants and treat the larger ones with herbicide in spring. So this is a good example of just sticking with the simple name, a honeysuckle. Every little kid loves honeysuckle, but the honeysuckle, and you can see a picture of the flower here, is an invasive shrub. This invasive ornamental shrub is invading forest edges, wild lands, and the interior of many woodlands. There are several species all from various parts of Asia. Its prolific red-orange fruits are consumed by birds and spread widely. This thornless shrub has fragrant white flowers that turn yellow. The thin oval opposite leaves are a dusty green color. Yank the young saplings or use a weed wrench. Apply herbicide to the bark of older plants in spring. The garlic mustard, the one plant they planted that did not take, which was fine. We can find it elsewhere. Mmm. Yeah, I think I have that invading my yard. The next invasive plant we're looking at, which isn't growing right here, is garlic mustard. You might recognize these white flowers on green leaves that you would see, and then the seed pods after the flowers are gone in the summer, and it spreads like wildfire. This is our most obnoxious invasive herb of no horticultural value. You can cook with the leaves or use them in pesto. The plant spreads very easily. It is a two-year, that is biennial plant. In the first year you get scalloped edged rosette-like leaves that resemble violet leaves on steroids. The second year plant is taller with pointed highly toothed leaves. The tiny white flowers are followed by long spiked pods that contain tiny seeds which are spread by rain or foot traffic. Garlic mustard kills off tree seedlings and native soil fungi that recycle nutrients into healthy woody plants. It is easy to pull. But pull in May or early June before the seeds form. Next one over is Japanese knotweed. And here are spring and summer pictures of the bamboo-like Japanese knotweed. It grows like crazy. 
This is an aggressive invasive alien herb that looks like a shrub due to its large size, often reaching 10 feet tall. It spreads along roadsides, onto fields, and into wetlands. It's expanding colonies, shade out all native plants, and nothing else grows. The bamboo-like jointed stems have a slight zigzag arrangement. The heart-shaped leaves are huge. Unlike native shrubs, this plant has sprays of white flowers in the late summer and fall. It's hard to eradicate knotweed by cutting it because it re-sprouts very quickly. Cutting just above the first node of the stalk and dripping herbicide in will be effective for young shoots. You can also inject glyphosate into the stalks. Autumn olive. Oh yeah, we hate you too. Although supposedly the berries have this whatever. Oh yeah, you can eat them. Yeah. The autumn olive tree. See those red berries? They have some nutritional value, but this is an invasive plant. You can see that leaf right there. Autumn olive trees were planted by the sides of roads and spread widely by birds. The autumn olive has white tubular flowers in spring and in fall the berries are edible. The leaves of the autumn olive are a dull green. You can yank the young saplings and you can apply herbicide to the larger plants in spring. Now this one is bittersweet. Bittersweet I hate. Bittersweet, you can see here, this is not very thick for a bittersweet. Bittersweet can be eight inches in diameter, a vine that strangles a 40-foot pine tree. So it's extremely invasive and extremely malicious vine. This ornamental vine is the number one invasive plant in Massachusetts. It's in the process of overwhelming most of our forest edges, roadsides, gardens, and open lands, forming vast bittersweet jungles. It's native to China and Eastern Asia. The fruits are yellow in October. These yellow coverings open in November, showing red fruit inside. These are consumed by birds and spread widely. Despite pretty fall colors, bittersweet wreaths are banned in Massachusetts for import and sale. Yank younger saplings out of wet soil Apply herbicide to the bark of older plants over several years. So in other words, the bittersweet is a horror story that is very difficult to rid yourself of. Poison ivy, which is not on wheat right now, so it's not very uh, photogenic. There's some little vines in here, but you're not really going to pick them up. I was wondering if you were going to put poison ivy in your invasives. Yeah, because it's an educational garden for kids, so I wanted yeah. to do that too. Poison ivy is a nuisance plant. And it can either be a low-lying shrub or a woody plant that grows up trees. Flowers are a spray and it fruits in clumps. The leaves come in triplets and they can be shiny or dusty and dull. The leaves turn deep red in fall. It's best to use an herbicide to get rid of this plant as it is toxic to touch. And common buckthorn. So the final plant that we're looking at is the common buckthorn. You can see the woody stem there. And maybe you recognize this plant, this tree, really. You see those berries, the blackberries it gets? It's the common buckthorn. This is an invasive ornamental that's native to Europe and Southwest Asia. It fruits prolifically and birds eat the fruit. This thornless shrub or small tree has tiny white flowers and thin oval leaves that are finely scalloped on the edges. Each leaf has several veins that curve outward and then merge with the tip of the leaf. Unlike the more common glossy buckthorn, its clustered fruits all ripen to black at the same time. You can yank the younger saplings out of wet soil or use a weed wrench you can apply herbicide to the bark of older plants. Because these are plants and they are invasive and you don't really want them to invade, how have you been controlling it? Do you collect the seeds, for example? Do I? No, I mean, 
there's different ways of doing it. Some of the plants, like you know, when they're small, you can you can pull them out. Sure. Um, but uh, I really think herbicide is a you know rational, appropriate, ecological thing to do. If if you can do it and win the battle, it makes sense to do it. I don't like to see people using chemicals and just kind of flailing away with them. And you have to be very judicious with their use. But if you're responsible with how you're using it and you actually win and convert an area over to native uh, plants, it's, I think, you know, a win. A good thing to do. Now, do you use Roundup? Is that the typical? Roundup is one, but there's another chemical I use, which is uh, active ingredients, triclopyr. Okay, triclopyr. Could you, for instance, apply that to a tree the size of that autumn olive there? Yeah, one technique people use, uh, and it's pretty good for homeowners, is to cut the plant and then treat the stem so that they don't sprout again. I see. So you That's cut the, the stems down to the bottom and then you apply the yeah. poison to the That could be a little tedious. I favor a different technique where I use a bark penetrating herbicide mm -hmm. and uh, it has an oil base, a seed oil base, and you can use it you know, during the dormant season. You don't need leaves to, or, you know, to, to spray onto and you don't need to cut the plant first. You simply just apply it, goes through the bark, kills the plant, you're done. Right. So one of my questions for you, uh, my original question to you about this garden, this not garden but gallery of invasives, is that these plants themselves right here in this area produce seed. And there are animals that walk through that might eat the autumn olive berries or something right. like that and then spread them. So you might ask, like, why I have this gallery here why you have it here and or how you <laughs> okay. are tr how so, you are hoping right. to control its invasive exactly. properties all right so when i was pitching this idea to the board of selectmen the school committee the conservation commission and the recom mm -hmm. uh i gave them a little bit of history i had been doing uh identification workshops for a long time and whenever i was doing them i would need fresh samples and i would always be in a rush to get them and um, you know that morning of kind of thing. I wanted them to be nice and fresh. So I'd go to the one place in town where I knew I could get them all, which is right here. <laughs> so literally many of these plants came within like a hundred feet of this gar gallery. Oh. I just went and dug them and put them here. So there are some invasive plants that are in Carlisle that don't happen to be in the site. Yes. And that's why they're not here in the gallery. I didn't want to introduce them. You know, that's great. That's great. That's like great. Porcelain berry is one of them. Uh, porcelain berry? Porcelain. Porcelain berry. Yeah, porcelain berry. That's a real nasty one. And we do have it in Carlisle. Yeah. Uh, but not in this area. Well, I really appreciate your taking me, and I know we have to get going. Let's say goodbye to the wonderful but horrible invasive species gallery in Carlisle, Massachusetts. I'd like to provide a little epilogue to this video, which was about the in invasive plants of New England, but specifically those that could be found in the Carlisle Invasive Plant Gallery. I started this footage in 2014, and I visited the gallery recently in 2018 and noticed that it's been quite challenged and destroyed somewhat by bulldozers. So here are some pictures of that that you're looking at right now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And let me know. Subscribe to CB99 videos. Please subscribe.